Hi everyone, Anita here from Beef It Up Australia. Hope you're all well. I'm here with Kendall, our gadget girl. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Van still napalm, but we're cleaning it up. That's good. Well, all your toys in there. Yeah, I mean, all your, my, your, my your, gadgets. I've got to learn to keep calling them gadget because people look at me weird when I say I've got toys in the van. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll just we'll just <laughs> leave we'll just leave that there. Yeah, yeah. We've got audio equipment. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, how you been? Yeah, not too bad. It's a lovely drive out here today. Looks a lovely canola crops coming in. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. looking really good in Betty Go, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. I don't know. Well, I haven't been anywhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, we have somebody pretty pretty cool on the line. Um, he's, a, he's a man, a young man who I've been following on Facebook. I feel like a bit of a stalker when I go and check out his page, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, he travels light. He travels... Uh, he travels with uh, with with puppies. Yeah, and uh, he he's really really passionate, a passionate young man. Yeah, um, mo- helping helping move the country. Oh, awesome! Yeah, so we, I think we better bring him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Everyone's On the line we have Tones. How are you, mate? G'day. Uh, I'm pretty good, thanks. How's about yourself? Pretty oh, good. Going good here in in lovely Victoria. Yeah. So, so we're about to you. Uh, I'm up at Mount Larkham at the moment, so I finally found somewhere with a bit of phone reception so we could do this. Third time lucky, I think it is. It but, is, um, it is. Yeah, so up sort of um, up near Rockhampton for those of you playing at home that don't know the areas too well. So I've just yeah. pulled into the servo here, letting the puppies out for a run and having a chat with you fine people. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be going to Rockhampton in September, but I don't think it's oh, going to happen. It's supposed to be the Junior Australian Motocross Championships up there. Well, good luck. Well, it's good been cancelled last year, so we've brought it forward to this year. So the poor club, dealing with lockdowns and all this, trying to organise a national racing event. Yes. Oh, it's really hard. Yeah, a lot of events have been, have been canned, but that's a very good segue into what mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about. Well done, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Tones. Yes, that's me. Okay, so you have been a truck driver for how long? Uh, probably roughly 15 years since I, I was 19. Um, yeah, and, and interstate, I guess, on and off, uh, yeah, since I was about 20, I guess. I had about a, a three-year hiatus there where I, I managed a pallet company down in Hastings, Victoria, and then at the same time, I, I, was, I had a bit of a football career too, so I um, I jumped back into the truck for and before I knew it, I, I bought my first one. So uh, I've been owner driver for the best part of over three years now, I suppose. Yeah. Nice Kenworth work. or Mac? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? You know, well, you wouldn't go out and buy a Mac, would you? No. Like, you're sort of forced <laughs> to drive one, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> but um, no, I'm, I'm definitely a Kenworth man. So yep. uh, for a few, few reasons behind that, um, one, I love them. They're, you know, they're best looking trucks that have got in Australia. But yes. also, when it when it comes to the money and that sort of stuff, I, I deemed it as the best value for money, especially down the track for resale value and those types of things as well. So it's not just the fact that it's the Kenworth and the name is. Uh, there's a few little moving parts involved with it also. Beautiful. That's awesome. Beautiful. Now, I did mention that I am one of your followers on your That's Facebook right. page. Give it a plug. Yeah, uh, time, what, time's trucking stories. Um, well, basically, just uh, videos of, of me on the road, predominantly, um, of doing different things from loading and unloading to um, just daily stuff that's going on. Sometimes I, I get a little bit political when I feel like it, and I, I feel like this podcast is going to go down that path at some point here. But, <laughs> well, you um, never know. <laughs> we so did many, touch on it. So, so how many followers but, um, do you have? Uh, I got about ninety thousand on Facebook, I think. Yeah, right, nice. Uh, yeah, so nice. it's uh, yeah, growing there, and it's not just Australia; it's uh, worldwide. And um, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I uh, I keep it all fairly positive and upbeat, and have a bit of a laugh. And I, I think that's something when I first started it that the industry needed, and um, and to really in the public's eye sh- shine it in a, a bit of a positive light. And you know, with the people, it it, it takes time, I guess, to um to sort of turn the ship in, in the direction of going, you know, we're, we're just people out here doing a job and, and we're like-minded people to so your, your local president down the football club or the, or the, uh, the young lady that's working 
at the supermarket type thing, you know. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, it's big mark. Yeah, that's what we're trying to change a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, yeah and it's that it's bringing awareness of the importance of the truckies, and that's what we do here at Beef It Up Australia. We are all about right. bringing bringing the awareness, but also supporting the farmers, the truckies the pubs, the small businesses and the small towns because at the end of the day, if we don't have any trucks on the road, we have nothing. We have yep. nothing in our cupboards. We have nothing in the pub. We have nothing. Mining stops. You, everything Everything is reliant on a truckie. Everything yeah. is reliant oh, yeah. on times. <laughs> <laughs> on times. <laughs> to, to, a, to a certain extent. But, um, yeah, yeah, and, and that being said, like, um, you also need consumers and, and places to take the freight also. So, as much as um, the country is relying on trucks moving and, and uh, getting goods and services there and machinery and that type of stuff for farmers, you know, it, it's all, it all works in together. It's all a, a web. So, um, That's right. you know, if, everyone, if everyone's able to operate at 100% and keep going, then I think everyone's winning, especially small businesses, That's as you say, like pubs and stuff. Like there's truckies out there moving gear every day. I don't, but the farmer next door or um, his mate that needs a tractor, that's my line of work. So, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yep. Everything's well, relative. That's right. And so, of course, um, so we're just just on a on a little bit of a uh, tangent. Un, un, unpaid. No, no. I will call it a sponsorship level. Yep. Um, Tones, you're involved with Macca, who um, between between the both of you, you've come up with TruckWiz, which is an app designed specifically for truck drivers. That's right, yeah. So uh, we, we got together roughly 18 months ago. Um, Macca was already working on the concept of, of TruckWiz and, and I sort of came along when I, I put a video up on my Facebook page about um, changes that need to be in the industry to help improve it and make it better and, and he reached out to me and, and we basically got the, the ball rolling there because we, we saw that there's a, a massive hole in, in how things are done in the industry and, and we just... We, we really want to help help out the drivers and make it easier, um, you know, for, for the little things, you know, new drivers out there that have to go to a different state or even within in the city type thing where you don't actually know the other the other side of town, like actually having an app that's dedicated just for trucks, that, you know, you, you're going to be able to drive with a little bit more confidence and um, not have to worry about cross-referencing from Google Maps to some sort of gazette and those types of things and ringing around, sort of just have, try and have everything in one place just to make it easier for all mm. drivers. And, yeah. and well, that's I, what we're working towards. Well, I do know for a fact that your that uh, your app is absolutely wonderful because uh, Tim, who is our ambassador and mental health advocate, um, yeah. he, he has got it on his phone and he's been road testing it, pardon the pun, and yeah. he said it is just absolutely brilliant. So he's 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 pretty damn happy with it. But That's we're so we're really happy. We're really really excited because <laughs> we've been talking to you and Maka, and yep. um, you guys have got just the biggest hearts. Because for anybody for any truckie out there to download it, it's one hundred and twenty nine dollars for a subscription for a year, which is damn damn good value. Um, However, for Beef It Up Australia um, supporters, um, you can download it for $109, but the ripper thing is, is you guys are donating two paddocks, which is $10 for every every subscription. Yeah, exactly right. So, yeah, as you say, like, me, me and Macca, we, we like to give back and, and that sort of thing, and you know, we're not breaking the bank with truck whiz by any means possible at the moment, but, you know, it's... It's about engaging everyone else that's in the industry and, and all working together, and that's that's where we started uh, to get in contact. You guys have been doing great work for years, and um, you know we want to get behind that. And we thought it was important right from from the get go that you know, we wanted to support a, a charity and that sort of thing. And 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 you guys are perfect because you know it, it's not just about trucks. You're doing things for mental health. You yeah, um, you know yeah. helping the small communities and and the small people, and, and that's what we're all about too. So, that's right, um, and that and that really that 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 really uh, makes makes us all happy here because for you guys to choose us as your charity of choice, um, 
particularly particularly this week, we are also able to announce that the Small Business Association of Australia has also chosen us as the charity Ooh, of choice. Oh, wow. And the amazing thing about that is that they're, they're uh, all about education and support and advocacy. And we had a chat with them um, this week and we're actually going to be taking on the situation of... Um, the truckies, the freight, the freight industry, yep. and uh, particularly with our, what we're going to be going into in a minute um, with COVID, um, but also <coughs> the very big, the very very big level of mental health, and it's just you know, it's like with anything in life. If if we all saw saw this beautiful world together, we can all work together and achieve beautiful things. <coughs> So on that note, I'm going to open yep. up a massive can of worms. <laughs> yeah, something that I have actually stayed very silent about through it all, actually. So, yes. but anyway, I'll let you go on. You okay. tell the story. Okay. Yep. <laughs> well, our can of worms today, and, and this segment is called What's Your Beef? And... Um, I think this beef, I think what you're going to be saying, and I don't know what you're going to say, so I could be walking into the lines. <laughs> but I've got a bit of an idea that you may be resonating everything of what everybody else is saying as well, particularly in the trucking sector, so all your colleagues. We're talking about, of course, COVID and the uh, man, the. The COVID vaccine, which isn't mandatory, but it's mandatory that you have the vaccine to cross the border, even though we don't have the border passport yet. yet. Yeah. I mean, what a, yeah. what an absolute shit fight. Excuse my excuse my language, but oh, you're probably early and no swearing. Oh, oh, oh this must be serious. Well, well I'm allowed. I'm I'm allowed to I'm a, I'm a loudie because at the end of the day, that's that's the harsh that's the harshest that I will go mm. um, on this because um, I, I, we have to be very very uh, careful with what we say <laughs> and how we say it. However, um, it is what it is, and you know if it. Uh, Looks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Guess what? It's a duck. It's got to be a duck. <laughs> so, Tones, um, you've been having conversations with other truckies, I believe. I, I have. So it sort of goes, I, I, I've intentionally stayed silent on it because my the way I go about things is when I see or hear something, I take a lot of time to research it before I come up with my own conclusion and, and generally try and get an answer before I go public with anything. And, and to be honest, when it, when it comes to COVID, um, I haven't worked it out yet, you know, and, and I'll, I've, I've worked out what I, I want personally, but, you know, I'm not going to push my beliefs or anything on, onto anyone else. But um, one of the other reasons I, I haven't touched on is because my page is positive and, you know, upbeat, I actually, I learned from a lot of my followers that they're actually coming to my page as, as a relief from having... COVID, if you want to call it propaganda, jammed in your face, or just COVID in general. So uh, that's why I've kept it pretty clean, and I'm pretty happy to sort of open up with you guys on, on a podcast because it takes the focus off my page at the same time. But um, yeah, just <laughs> a little joke there. But look, but, at, um, at, the, at the end of the day, Tones, at the end of the day, we have got a situation here. Whether we, we do, yeah. whether we yeah. want to talk about it or not, whether we want to read what's on our feeds on social media or see what's on TV, yeah. it is what exactly. it is. And yeah. we are now seeing, and we, are, and we are, and I will say right now, we are apolitical at Beef It Up Australia. If there is a, if there is a party out there or, or, or a politician who is going to stand up for us, we will recognise that. And the only person right now who is recognising... <laughs> The injustice is Pauline and Pauline Hanson and Malcolm, Malcolm Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. And and even then, um, a lot of what they're doing is getting silenced, and that that's what I'm, I'm sort of going to get to here. Is over probably the, the past month, I've sort of just been sitting back and just watching what transpires. But of late, over the last couple of weeks, um, so first up, I, I'll probably. Should say that um, you know truckies have actually had a unique experience through this whole COVID thing because um, we've effectively been able to go about our jobs and and travel anywhere and actually still interact with a lot of people and and what 
What's been sort of surprising with that is, surprising I suppose is, when you go to different states and speak to different people, you actually get their points of view of what they're thinking based on what they've seen on the media or what they're told. And, you know, you, you go to Queensland and I'll pick out something that they've seen on the news from Victoria, but Victoria is actually talking about a different thing. So I think for, for the most part, truckies have been able to develop their own perception of, of what's going on. And, and what I've sort of realised, I, I would say 90% of truck drivers um, are on that page of saying this is rubbish and I'm, I'm not interested with it. And that especially comes to, to the vaccine itself. Um, just, just this week. This week I've probably spoken to a, a dozen truck drivers, of which I don't know them for a bar of soap. They, they know me for my page, but I've never met them before or anything like that. And truck is a pretty... Pretty happy to open up with new feelings straight away. That's just how the industry works. Yep. But all, all of them have been very concerned about the vaccine because of what they've seen or heard. And no word of a lie here, out of those 12 people, four of them were actually told me a story, and it's not a story, it's a fact, of someone that was very close to them, either an, an auntie or a cousin or a best friend, yep. that had actually had the jab. And, you know, within a couple of days, we're in ICU. And and after I actually spoke to Max today, um, he actually told me that a few weeks ago, one of his mates got it and died. Oh. So, you know, it, you know I, I don't want to, you don't want to be an anti-vaxxer or anything like no, that. But I'm not an anti-vaxxer. But in the space of a week, I've been able to come across five people in, in a small circle that, have had massive complications from a vaccine, yet in 18 months, I haven't actually met anyone that knows anyone that has had COVID. So for me, at my end, my personal feeling is I'm, I'm more afraid of the vaccine than what I am the virus. Exactly, I, yes, exactly. I, I, I'm there. I'm, um, and, and, and it scares the living hell out of me um, in comparison, you know, and like I said before, I, I like to do a, a lot of research into whatever I... Um, whatever I read or, or see, because there's always more to it. And, and one thing I, I do find is it's very difficult to actually find accurate or independent data. But yes. something I did come across in a video was actually um, the vice president of the Pfizer, is it the Pfizer vaccine? Yeah, I've um, yeah, 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 seen that video, it. yep. Yeah. Yeah, so he actually came out publicly, and, and I've seen the video footage, and said his words, it's not safe, and that young people are actually 50 times more likely yeah. to die of the vaccine than what they are the virus. Now, yeah. for me, that's enough to sell me to say, I am not getting that vaccine. Yeah. Other people can do their own research, but I mean, that, that's my standpoint on it. And if they're going to close borders and that type of stuff and force, not force people, but say, you don't have to get the vaccine, but you're not coming into our state unless you get it, then well, that's coercion. That's, 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 that's the unknown. Yeah, that's, that's against the constitu- and, constitution and blackmail. Yeah, yeah. and it's stopping of stopping the um, the freedom of freight, which is, a, which is which is a constitutional issue. Just yeah. so, um, <clears throat> just as I said before, we are apolitical. However, uh, you're talking about you know getting getting information um, and and correct information in in the media and people being silenced. We have Craig Kelly, who was a liberal. Liberal MP in Sydney, um, he came out and he was saying, "Well, hang on a minute. What about ivermectin? What about hydrochloroquine? What what what's going on?" Well, he got that much of a backlash. He is now an independent, yeah. and and he is still on that. He is still on that, and he's also um, him, himself and and uh, Mr. Christensen. Um, there are so many others that are moving the motion of a no passport. Uh, vaccination passport bill. There is so much happening because we are simply cannot expect people like yourself, Tones, to do a job. And but to do your job, you have to get vaccinated. So the next question that I have for you is, and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Right, here we go. Is, then. is it? <laughs> It's a question which I've been asking quite a few people and I actually have made a decision about this for my own personal self in my industry that I'm in. But what are you going to do if it comes to the decision time of do I get the vaccine or do I park up? Uh, no, park up. 
I, I refuse to get that back. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I put my foot down on that. I, I don't know what the outcome of that is. There's obviously a few. There's put drivers on. There's driving specific states like manipulate how I'm going to go about doing transport. But I, for one, yeah, I will not get the vaccine based on almost being forced to do it. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. That, uh, that, that's my stand on it, yeah. How many um, tests do you have to do? You have to test for COVID every three days, don't you? Uh, I've had three tests in the last four days, yeah. Well, I do just to sort of keep ahead of it because mm. it, the results can take between 24 and 72 hours. Some drivers have had to wait up to a week to get their results. Sorry. Which, so, is, hold, which yeah. is which is holding up the country. They're losing money. Oh, yeah. The yeah. economy is coming crashing down. The mental health is coming crashing down. And it is, I mean, we're even seeing now um, evidence that even testing is not safe safe, and it's not a, a good measure for actually what's out there in the community. So, but the I mean... Best, the best thing is we've got an Australian invention and, yeah. our, and our constitution was still, well, our laws were changed last week so that we can actually use those home test kits. And as soon as that come out, I'm like, yep, Chuckies will be able to just, no, the results in 15 minutes. Yep. So that's the new saliva yeah, test well, that's, that's come out. Look, at the end of the day, Tones, um, I don't know what the answer is. Um, we all would like... No, I, 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 haven't, I haven't been able to work it out myself because the goalposts are constantly getting moved and, and there's almost no way of predicting what is going to happen next. So you actually can't... And from a business standpoint, it, it is worrying and scary. And I could imagine... That you know, that, and this is why I'm sort of talking now, that if I'm sort of in fear of these things and having sleepless nights, I could just imagine what it's like for other people out there that are also paying off a house and, you know, a car and have a young yep. family and stuff mm. that I don't have. That's how their mental feeling is at this point because it doesn't go away. It's in your face the whole time and you actually can't plan your future based around it, irrelevant of what side of the fence you're on with it all uh. because... Uh, yeah, I mean, you get the vaccine and you you can still catch it, you can still pass it. So, what actually happens next? Like, right. everyone gets the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. I, I so want to know what. How long does it go on for? I want to know how what happens in ten years. Well, my mother's like, my oh, mother's in yeah. her eighties, and she fled Germany as a little girl. Yeah, and she basically yeah. looked her doctor in in the in the eye. I was there, and and uh, it was like, yeah, oh, you know, would you like the the vaccine? And my mother said. Ask me in ten years because I want to see what the what the effects are. Yeah. Mm. She said, "I." And, and that's, that's, yeah. yeah, sorry, that and that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm not comfortable getting this vaccine because it's not proven. I'm I'm reading everywhere and, and seeing video testimonials from people that have had complications from it. That you know, further on down the track too, you know, there's a spike protein, you know, for reproduction and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Like, mm. it's just, nobody, nobody knows, and there's no, no answers out there. Um, so for me, that's that's enough to go. Nah, nah, and I just want to I just want to point out and clear clear up that if anybody is listening to this and going, oh, listen to these three, they're anti vaxxers No, I'm I am anti-vax. not an anti vaxxer no. I have been vaccinated. My children have been vaccinated. I am. I'm not going to talk for Kendall or for Tones, yeah. but no, I, I have to. Oh, yeah, growing up, I, I, I've yeah. I've had you know. Um, oh, what is it, rubella, all that tetanus? So, so, blah, so blah, us blah. three, we are not, yeah. we are not anti vaxxers No, what we are, nah. what we are, and what a lot of our our listeners and and people that that they know, um, we're just we're cautious. Mm. We value life more than anything else in the world. Of course, we do. We we are a human being, and therefore, we're not going to adhere to being jabbed with a chemical that does not have a hundred percent safety, and I mean, at the end of the day, why on earth do we have to sign an indemnity to the doctors? Yeah, that's what fr- that's really what <laughs> threw me. You know, like I deal with Department of Veterans Affairs a lot, and all the paperwork that I've got to sign to just you know get my knee looked at, or or my no, I've been waiting two and a half years for my head to get sorted. You know, and she means mental health, mental so. health of the head. Um, yeah. To sign that paperwork away, and if something goes wrong, 
you've got no insurance. That's right. So you're in a, and if you're over 60 and get put in a wheelchair, you've got to deal with NCIS and that's another, that's right. another can so of worms got, too. It's going to have a bigger impact on our whole society, on our whole framework and our whole economy yeah. and putting ourselves in, into more debt. Uh, Tones, I've got one. I've got. I've got one more. Um, one more thing that I just wanted to talk to you about. Um, yep. And then I've got a question for you, and then we'll wrap up because I know you've got to get back out on the road. Um, <laughs> no, no. My, I can't help think, uh, and this is my. This is my point of view. This is my opinion. Uh, nobody else's. So if anyone's listening to this, you know, don't don't go jumping up and down and oh, you know, beef it up. Said this. It's Anita Donlan saying this. I can't help think that this this is to this is to basically appease and to go through the back door of the RSRT. So the big companies who were trying to push out the owner drivers can get their way because when Turnbull came in, he didn't he didn't allow that to to, to happen back in the day when um, Turnbull won the election. Yeah, was that the question or a statement? No, 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 it's a statement. I don't expect anybody yeah. to to make a comment on that. But for me, yeah. for me, um, the larger companies are demanding that their drivers are, yes. are, are, are vaccinated, and they go through that channel, and they're hoping that the tones of the world are going to go stuff this. I'm parking up. See you later. I'm going to go and become a whatever, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and move, yeah, on, and so, move so, on out of the industry. Yeah. I, I well, I, I, mean, and, I mean, not just me, but a lot of people are going to be confronted with this um, going forward. Like, uh, the other night I was at Kinra, spoke to three truck drivers there. You know, that all of them said, I don't want to get the vaccine. But then they all said that they're actually in fear of losing their job. So everyone's going to have that line in the sand moment where um, they don't want to get it, but they're are they going to be forced to by by their jobs or their, their employers potentially? Or the other thing too is like the, the bullying and you know almost mm. like World War One, you know, almost the white feather type thing to say, yep. you know, do the right thing, do it for you, do it for your family, for your people, and yep, yeah, yep. you know, it, it sounds, sounds sounds very far fetched and. You know, we're definitely going to get called conspiracy theorists out of this one, but um, well, look, you know, I, I, if we're if we're going to be called if we're going to be called conspiracy theorists, so be it. But we cannot be put into the corner and 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 ignored because it is it is an opinion that is based on research, and the research is coming out from medical professionals, which our politicians yeah. and our chief health advisors and. The government in general is not listening to, so that's why we wanted to get on and talk to you, um, and and basically say, you know, how's it going out there on the road? What's the momentum? We are thinking about you, your mental health, and everybody behind the steering wheel. The, their mental health is is paramount to us. So like, we just wanted mm. to let you know, yeah, that all of your all of your associates out there, if you come in contact with them, let them know. That you know, they're not alone. Beef it up, Australia is there. We are caring oh, about them. What? Like- yeah, and I'll, 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 I'll give a give a, a plug for Helping Gear here also. That um, I'm an ambassador for them. If uh, people aren't aware for mental health and physical yeah, wellbeing, go for it. Yeah, go, go, for for it. go for it. Yeah. Um, they've got a phone number there. It's one eight hundred in gear. You know, if if you need to talk to anyone about anything and you're not sure who to speak, especially in one of these scenarios where you know, the, the people might be against you, but you want someone to talk to, um, you know, give them a buzz. Because right, right in this climate, um, you know, sometimes it's best just to get things off your chest. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's organisations like yourself, they beef it up as well. So uh, Yeah, and, um, look, and look, we ex- yeah. we extend out to anybody, you know, if they want, if anybody wants to come behind the scenes and talk to us, or give or give yeah. me a ring. My phone number's on there. We're not we're not trained yeah. counsellors, but we we understand and we 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 sit and shut up and listen. And you know we're glass half full. On that note, I have one more question for you. One more. Right. <laughs> one more. Okay. So the segment is called "What's Your Beef?" In a very very quick thirty second elevator spiel, tones. What's your beef? What is my beef? My my beef is. Uh, it's 
proving more and more difficult to do my job without knowing what the future holds. And my, my belief is that, that my beliefs and, and yeah, my beliefs and decisions are actually potentially going to be unheard or forced otherwise. So. Okay. I didn't really tell that too well because no. I didn't know that question was coming. <laughs> we don't tell anybody. We don't tell, we don't tell, we don't tell anyone. That, that secret squirrel yeah. stuff. That's right. And so, like, the best thing about us is like we can sit down and talk and disagree and whatever and we're still mates. That's right. And and, and I find that society doesn't allow that anymore. Like they don't allow someone else's opinion. If you're different, they stomp you out. So I'd just like to thank you for saying you're saying exactly what I'm thinking, so thank you. This woman, t- this woman yeah. knows what's in my head and what I'm about to say. And it's just <laughs> incredible. So, ladies and ladies and gentlemen, beefitupaustralia.org, 1000paddocks.org. If you want to chip in five bucks or any amount towards our Thousand Paddocks campaign, we will welcome you. If you want to join Cara, jump onto. The website as well. Cara is a is a cool little chick. She uh, needs pink hair. It and stands. Eater. It stands for <laughs> caring about rural Australians, yeah. just like Kendall, myself, Tones, and if you're listening, so do you. you. Tones, That's safe it. travels, and, and well, go for it, Tones. Yep. Well, I was going to say, well, you know, rather, rather than just say uh, give five dollars to get a paddy, you could buy truck with and will donate two paddy. There you oh, go. There you go. Hey, that's right. That's right. right. That's you're, right. You can, I can slip that back in. Your next, your next job is as a salesman, mate. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't think so. Oh, well, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's right. Uh, and uh, <laughs> just give your page one one quick uh, one quick plug. Uh, yeah, it's Bones Fucking Stories on uh, Facebook. And, um, yeah, if you want some merchandise as well, jump on BonesFuckingStories.com. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Give, puppy, <laughs> give puppies a hug for us and I will I talk do. to you on the other side. Beautiful. All right. Well, have a good day, girls. Thanks, Thank Jamie. you. Bye-bye.